Hey guys, welcome back to a new biology with Zhang Shen video. So today we are going to do the Cambridge IGCSE Biology Paper 6 Alternative to Practical, the October-November 2023 series Paper 6 Variant 2. So I'm going to be attempting this Paper 6 paper today. So let's start off with the first question. Question 1. Student investigated the effect of temperature on the activity of amylase. Amylase is an enzyme that catalyzes the breakdown of starch to form reducing sugars. The students use this method. So they say step 1. Use a pen to label a spotting towel as shown in figure 1.1. And step 2. Ask to put one drop of iodine solution into each of the dimples. And step 3. Put 2 cm cube of 2% amylase solution into 2 test tubes. Step 4, label a third test tube W and a fourth test tube C. Step 5, put, put 2 cm cube of starch suspension into test tube W and into test tube C. Step 6, label a beaker W and put approximately 200 cm cube of warm water into beaker W. Step 7, put test tube W and one of the test tube containing 2 cm cube of 2% amylase solution into beaker W. Leave both test tubes in beaker W for 3 minutes. Step 8. After 3 minutes, pour the 2% amylase solution into the test tube W and start the stop clock. And then the rest of it, um, you can have a read, which is just asking you to add in, two different, in different kinds of dimples. Okay? Alright, so the results of the investigation are shown in figure 1.2 where the key is blue-black color and the, the lighter color is yellow-brown color. For A part 1, prepare a table and record the results shown in figure 1.2. So for this table that I've drawn, right, it's more of like just identifying it only. So what I can see here is that I have put test tube for W and C and then the color change after iodine solution added and I put number 1 which has this particular color on it and then the rest of it i just fill in the blanks okay this is how i get my three marks for part two state the conclusion for the result shown in figure 1.2 so for this one is where it's quite uh, implicit because you might not be able to find the change in temperature here however in the first sentence this is students investigated the effect of temperature on the activity of amylase so of course a conclusion would be when the temperature increases, the greater the enzyme activity. All right. Part three state the independent variable in this investigation. This will be the temperature. Part four state three variables that were kept constant in this investigation. Number one is the volume of amylase added. Second is the concentrate concentration of amylase solution, and the last one would be the drops of iodine solution added. For B part 1, explain why the method used in this investigation does not allow the student to obtain an accurate time for the breakdown of starch. Okay, for me, the keyword here is an accurate time. So the reason for this is because the time intervals between each of these being an uh, uh, investigation is too long. So having a, small, small, a shorter time interval will be much more effective. So this will be the answer. For part 2, the temperature of the water in the beakers during the investigation was a source of error. Describe how you could improve the method to reduce this error. So the keyword here is the temperature of the water. So if you have been practicing a lot, you know that this the obvious answer will be using a thermostatically controlled water bath. If you put water bath, you still get it wrong. You must have thermostatically controlled. You must have... Um, machine that helps to control the particular temperature and it must remain constant part three the test tubes were left in the beakers of warm or cold water for three minutes in step seven and step 12 before the amylase solution was poured into the starch suspension explain why the test tube were left in the beakers for three minutes so they were left there for short amount of time is just to ensure the equilibrium in the temperature is achieved where the intercontents of the test tube is equal to the temperature of the water in the beaker it has to be the same okay means no net change in temperature okay it has to be the same thermal equilibrium okay question 2a 
planning investigation question. So they say plant milk contains fats. The enzyme lipase catalyzes the breakdown of fats to form fatty acids and glycerol. The fatty acids cause the pH of the milk to decrease. Plan an investigation to determine the effect of lipase concentration on the breakdown of fats in milk. So I will use this um, acronym I don't care so run away which is to list out the IV, DV and the CV uh, the safety precaution and then the repeat and if there's any numeric uh, numerical value I will add an average so I, this time I have written this in point form so it's easy to see what I have uh, chose but usually you can write either in point form or in paragraph form so my answer is this to plan this investigation prepare three different lipase enzyme concentration and it lists as 5%, 10% and 15% I will also prepare a pH paper which I need to measure the pH after a period of time. And during the investigation, I will be recording the initial and final pH and the type of milk, the volume of milk being added and the volume of lipase enzyme will be my constant variable. And lastly, the use of gloves is needed throughout the investigation and there will be a total of two to three repeats to ensure a safe and also a fair investigation. So where do I get my marks from? One mark is from here, a pH paper is needed and then, uh, and then to measure the pH after the time, this will be the DV. Uh, this will be one of the methods. This is the... Const, uh, constant variable and the safety precaution and then the total of two to three repeats this should be how i structure my answer to get the six marks okay part b the emulsion test is used to test a sample of food for fat describe the method you would use to do the emulsion test so this is something unusual so how would you do is by adding ethanol and water and you just shake them that's all okay Alright, question 3. Figure 3.1 is a photograph of a type of seaweed called bladder rack. The bladders help the seaweed float in water. So A part 1 draw a large diagram of the bladder rack seaweed shown in figure 3.1. So I just did a rough sketch. It's not that good because it's on iPad. So if you draw on paper, it would be much more better. And how is it being assessed is by a single clear line with no shade. Uh, about 114 millimeters long okay and about seven bladders are drawn which is here seven bladders and a central midrib attached to two of the ends which is actually here draw this midrib it's in the middle it's kind of like a stamp but it's called midrib okay for part two line pq on figure 3 point represents the length of one bladder on the bladder rack seaweed the actual length of a bladder is 90 millimeter so I measured the length of the line PQ, it's about 12 millimeters for me and you just sub in to find the magnification. So I got 0.63 and remember it's two decimal places. So I'll just put an X to indicate this is magnification and it will be X 0.63. Part 3. Seaweeds are species of algae that live in the sea. Figure 3.2 shows photograph of a bladder rack seaweed in, and a different species of seaweed called egg rack. The photographs are in the same magnification. So state two ways visible. Okay, this is the keyword. The bladder rack is different from the egg rack. So the most obvious one in the bladder rack is that there is more uh, bladders. Okay, and then the bladder racks have their bladders very very close to each other. While this in the egg rack is much further away. Okay, you see the distance. Okay, it's much more spread apart. Okay. Alright, D. The bladder rack is found on the seashore and is exposed to the air when it's not covered by water at a certain time of day. So then investigate the how rapidly bladder rack lost water. They use this method. Three samples of bladder rack were collected. The samples were blotted with tissue to remove any water on the surface of the seaweed. The initial mass of each sample was recorded and the sample were hung from a piece of string edge stretched between two stands and the mass of each sample was recorded every 30 minutes for the first two hours and, the, and, and then every hour for a further three hours. Suggest two variables that the students should keep constant during their investigation to ensure that the results are valid. The temperature must be kept constant. The humidity must be kept constant. And other uh, factors could be like the wind speed, okay, that could be also one. 
Alright, then the next one, table 3.1 shows the initial message recorded by the students and their final message recorded after 5 hours. Part 2 is one of the final messages recorded is anomalous. State what is meant by an anomalous result. So it's technically results which do not fit or suit to the general trend. You can see 82, 144, 70 and 76 which doesn't make sense at all. So this is doesn't fit the general pattern of results. Okay, part 3 describe how the students calculate the mean value for the final mass of the bladder rack. If you just use 82 plus 70 and divide by 2, you actually get 76. So what they do is that they excluded the final, final mass of the sample number 2. Okay, part 4. Using the information in table 3.1, calculate the mean percentage decrease in the mass of the bladder rack sample after 5 hours. Give your answers to two significant figures. Okay, so the word the formula for percentage decrease is final minus initial over final times by 100 and you will get your answer as 57%. C. The students repeated the investigation using egg rack seaweed. Table 3.2 shows the mean percentage decrease in the mass of the egg rack sample throughout the investigation. So they given you this and this and they asked to plot a line graph. When they, when they say a line graph, you can either draw a line graph which is connected to one plot to another or you can draw a line of best fit. But usually for bio graphs, it's better to draw with connected plots. So this is how it looks like. It's a very simple graph. Just interpret your uh, values into this and then how you're going to get your marks is by um, your axis being written and a suitable line and then correct all right data and correct values placed on the axis and then the plot must be smaller not too big so this is how the graph will look like as your references Okay, last question. Many people eat seaweed. State the name of the region that can be used to test seaweed for protein and vitamin C. Very simple. So the protein will be from a burette solution and vitamin C is from DCPIP. Alright, so that is the end of the paper. Thank you so much for watching and see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.